need to make sure that the surface finish is going to stronger the connectivity. I'm also taking into account the prevention um, against oxidation, but also not compromising the integrity of the small features. And in this sense, we are going to look at um, electrolytes, nickel, uh, immersion gold, or for instance, immersion uh, silver. We might be looking at OSP and we might also be looking at uh, hot air um, solder um, leveling. Then when it comes to um, semi-flex PCBs, um, we will be looking at surface uh, finishing choices which are um, preventing mechanical stresses uh, but also ensure um, thermal stability and uh, here except for instance um, electrolytes nickel immersion on gold we might be looking at electrolytes nickel um, electrolytes palladium immersion gold as well as some immersion tin and uh, always bank Addressing semi-flex PCBs, um, we need to take into account uh, mechanical stresses and the thermal stability. And here our choice is supposed to be focused on um, electrolytes nickel immersion gold, uh, electrolytes nickel um, uh, electrolytes palladium immersion gold, and then OSP, also uh, immersion uh, tin. Then the last one, flex PCBs, um, which are prone to bending and also mechanical stresses. We also need to take into account corrosion resistance. So here we will be looking at surface finishes such as um, uh, electrolytes nickel uh, immersion gold on um, uh, OSP and uh, immersion uh, tin. Challenges um, regarding uh, um, electrochemical surface finishing um, related to non-uniformity and the thickness troubles uh, can be addressed by having or gaining the process control. And nowadays we can achieve this by implementing computer-aided engineering approaches, which basically rely on having the concept of digital twin of the plating process. The digital twin concept of the plating process relies on having um, the actual plating process infrastructure pre-configured in the numer uh, virtual world, computer simulation, so which takes into account not only the infrastructure of the plating line, but also the plating solution, the process parameters, conditions of this process, and also the design of the PCB. With this digital twin concept, we are then able to not only analyze what is the current situation, current performance of the process, but also optimize it. So with this upfront, we can recognize um, whether there is any issue with our process and then optimize it, gaining much more control over what we play, how we play it, and whether we are plating towards the spe specification of the thickness required or not. Compromising or finding the ways of um, pre preventing the diffusion um, of the copper atoms towards palladium uh, or um, silver um, uh, metallic uh, metallic layers. Um, there are actually four strategies, two of them relying on applying barrier coatings. And on one hand, we can um, approach this by applying nickel coating. On the other hand, we can also use something more sophisticated. Specifically, if the PCB is going to work in harsh environments with elevated temperatures, here we can rely on um, uh, cobalt molybdenum or phosphorus coatings. Then the third one, uh, third strategy is going to be related to optimization of the thickness of palladium and silver. So normally the thicker coating can act as buffer and slow down the um, diffusion of copper atoms towards a palladium layer or a, a silver layer. And then the fourth one is going to be related to uh, applying um, low temperature post plating annealing treatment. Uh, which is going only to stabilize the interface between the copper and the palladium or uh, gold. And then when it comes to the innovative te techniques, um, I'm not sure whether they are so innovative, but there are actually three techniques which we can use here. And uh, the first one is going to be alloying uh, palladium or silver with some other metals like zinc, platinum or gold in small traces, of course. Second one would be changing the operating conditions of the plating process. For instance, we are going to move to pulse plating, pulse reverse plating, which allows us to control more the grain size and the microstructure formation. And with pulse plating, we are going to achieve fine grade structures, which are going to only strengthen the boundaries. And then the diffusion is going to be slowed down. And then the third one, I would say that this is more cutting edge technology because we are going to rely here on the atomic layer deposition which is going to allow us um, approaching very thin layers. And here we are talking about the layers such as uh, aluminum oxide or um, um, titanium nitride. 
The best practice is for increasing the yield of the uh, surface finishes processes for the high volume production is going to be, first of all, make sure that we are gaining the process control. The process control is not only recognition of the process parameters that are going to influence the performance of the process, but it's also taking into account the quality of the materials. And I'm speaking here about the chemicals and also the raw materials, taking care about the pretreatment steps, uh, taking care about the um, environmental parameters such as temperature and the humidity level in the room because this will also have the impact on the sensitive alloys or maybe sensitive coatings such as for instance immersive um, gold. And then we also need to make sure that our staff, operating staff, is being trained well and they are up to knowledge with the, uh, operating the, the process that we have in production. We also do need to take um, uh, into account maintenance of the equipment. Uh, and also maybe some kind of calibrations has to be taken into account as well. And, and then uh, the last thing maybe is going to be um, investment in some inspection techniques. And I mean here, um, for instance, in light automated optical inspection for the defect detection. Uh, it might be also XRFs for the analysis of the thicknesses. And then the last thing, I would also put pressure on gaining the knowledge and also tools for the computer-aided engineering approaches where we can really rely on this uh, platability analysis when we can investigate how the process be behavior is going to look like, specifically electric plating process, before any production can happen and how to get the control and improve the process once some uh, issues are going to occur. So copper distribution can impact surface finishes um, very significantly and uh, it's going to affect um, the thickness of the layers, it's going to affect the adhesion to the surface and then overall it's going to have the influence on the um, functionality of the board. For instance, copper distribution is going to affect the distribution of the current densities during the electroplating process, creating high and low current density surface area that are going to have um, direct impact on the thicknesses in those places. Copper distribution can also influence how the board is going to be heated up during the um, uh, solder leveling process. Uh, it's going to affect the corrosion resistance, it's going to affect mechanical stresses whenever we are talking about the microvials. And then also it's going to affect the intermetallic compounds that are being created in between the copper layer and then palladium or, uh, or gold layer. One of the advancements is going to be related to this very popular electroless nickel or electroless nickel palladium immersion gold. And this is related to having much better process control, specifically for the finer geometries. We might also see those processes uh, going towards more heavy duty applications where we are going to consider coatings such as uh, graphene or um, carbon based. Uh, we might be seeing evolution of the lead free um, coatings. We might be seeing eco friendly OSP. We might be going from wet processing towards dry processing to eliminate toxic uh, materials, metals. So we might be also going into hybrid surface finishes so that we are going to have the combination of multifunctionality of the board, gaining from each of the surface finish that has individually. Uh, we might be also going into nanoparticle coatings, and here I can think about nano gold, nano silver, where we are going to have very thin layers, so we are going to save on the precious materials. And then one of my favorite applications is going to be 3D printed uh, polymer PCBs, uh, which are going to be plated, normally electroplated. There are some surface finishes that are compatible with the additively manufactured surfaces. One of them is already mentioned, the uh, plating on plastic, so for the 3D printed uh, polymer-based PCBs. So we might be also having a look, maybe some other techniques related to more advanced coatings, as already mentioned, carbon or graphene uh, one. Uh, we might be also looking at hybrid surface finishes when again we are going to have the combination of different individual surface finishes in order to obtain multifunctionality. Uh, we might be also looking um, at techniques which allow us to print the coating um, into the traces so that we can increase also the, the conductivity. In class 3 PCBs, to find the balance between the corrosion resistance, uh, thermal stability and also cost effectiveness, uh, we first of all need to answer the questions, uh, what is the operating condition or what are the operating conditions the specific product is going to work uh, within? Uh, then what are the performance requirements and what is the cost tolerance? Um, having in mind um, the fact that the properties, thermal properties, corrosion properties cannot be compromised, then we should definitely go with uh, electroless nickel palladium immersion uh, gold one. Although we have to take into account that this kind of surface finish is going to be a little bit expensive. So if we can compromise of the thermal stability and corrosion properties, we can go for something cheaper and then we will going to stick to electroless nickel immersion gold.
We can also rely on uh, immersion silver, but then it might also require from us some kind of extra process step. And this will only add the, to the overall cost. So maybe not the ideal solution. PCB designer should take into account the following factors when considering the substrate for the high frequency uh, applications. Um, so surface roughness, that's for sure. Um, the electric constant. Then uh, conductivity and the resistivity of the surfaces. Corrosion resistance, uh, oxidation resistance, and then the thermal stability. And this is important because, for instance, if I'm going to choose uh, surface finish in the form of uh, hot air uh, solder uh, leveling, then I need to be aware that this kind of surface finish is going to create a very high roughness on the surface. And high roughness means that we are going to degrade the signal uh, in uh, integrity. So in order to avoid this mistake, we might be then going to move towards the surface finish related to immersion gold, which provides normally very smooth and very well conductive surface. So that also minimizes the losses of the signal integrity. To assess the quality of the surface finish, there are key factors that we can highlight here. Uh, one of the first ones to talk about is thickness of the coating, thickness of the layer. Then we also are going to look at the adhesion to the surface, surface roughness. We are going to have a look at the uh, rate of the um, uh, defect. We are going to have a look at the time cycle. We are going to have a look at the um, solderability. We are going to have a look at the cost per unit. And then perhaps also um, uh, formation of the intermetallics and obviously customer feedback. Virtual modeling of the electroplating uh, processes, so I'm talking here particularly about the copper electroplating for the PCB, can um, allow us to have a very good uh, control over plating process so that we can control how well we are depositing copper, control the thickness and the coverage. And this analysis, virtual modeling, allow us to recognize what are the over underplating surface area, how the current density distribution looks like on the active surface areas before any actual plating process is going to happen. So if we are having any complex design and we can upfront evaluate how this uh, plating process performance is going to look like on this design, we can then also take some preventive, preventive measures towards process optimization and then uh, run our actual process making, by making sure upfront that it is going to be adjusted in a much better way than normally we would do this without having this uh, virtual modeling approaches in-house. The three messages of the PCB designer. So please take into account first that surface finish is going to affect the signal integrity and uh, overall performance of the board. Second, you always need to think that um, PCB board performance is going to be dependent on the operational environment. So that in order to have a good overview on what kind of surface finish you should choose for the PCB, you should always take into account the application this PCB is going to be put into. And this is, those are the three factors I would definitely like them to remember.